Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about a classic movie in which a postman becomes friends with a famous poet who teaches him how to impress women. During the film he meets many women. What happens next? Watch the full episode to know. The film begins on an island where a man named Mario is sitting with a postcard, which his friend has sent him from America. Mario is the son of a fisherman, with whom his relationship is complicated. He wants to go out of this island and does not want to become a fisherman. He indirectly tries to talk to his father about this by saying that there is no water problem in America and everyone earns money there. His father ends this by saying that he can go wherever he wants to go, but find a job for himself. There is a water problem on that island, but this does not make a difference to Mario and the other people. Mario and the other people of the island watch a newsreel where they find out that a poet from Chile named Pablo Neruda is being expelled from that country and sent to his island in Italy because the government there is upset with his communist ideas. Hearing this, the people of the island are very happy and then Mario sees a notice in which it is written that he is looking for a man for the postman's job who has a cycle. The next day, Mario goes to the post office to talk about the job, where he is told that he has to send letters to only one place, Pablo Neruda's house, for which a lot of letters have come. Giorgio, his superior, tells him that he will get less money for this job and he will have to treat Pablo with respect because he is a great poet. Mario's work will start after a few days, but he starts wearing a uniform to show his father. As soon as the work starts, he begins to understand about Pablo, and he understands why girls and women love him so much. Whenever he comes to Pablo's house with letters, he tells his father and Giorgio everything about Pablo, what kind of person he is, how he talks, how he lives, everything. Mario wants that when he goes to America, the girls will be as crazy about him as they are about Pablo. And that's why he starts reading the poems written by Pablo and practices taking his autograph so that he can tell everyone that he knows Pablo Neruda. But Mario is not happy with the autograph because Pablo has not written Mario's name and now no one will believe that Pablo is his friend. Giorgio tells him that he should ask for an autograph when the time is right and Pablo is not busy. But this time Giorgio asks for the autograph for himself. The thing that Mario starts for his personal interest, he gets lost in it and slowly he starts to get interested in poetry and he starts talking to Pablo in his own language. Pablo sees that Mario is interested in poetry, so he explains to him some words and their meanings, but then he says that some words are not explained in poetry. His feelings have to be understood. If you explain the meaning of a poem, then its real purpose is lost. A friendship between the two begins and Pablo also tells him to come inside his house and read the letters he received. Mario tells him that he also wants to be a poet, so that the girls are as crazy about him as he is, and he can also say all the things he wants to say. Pablo explains to him that he does not need to become a poet to say his words, and if he wants to become a poet, he will have to go to the seaside and see and understand the things around him. Learning about poetry from Pablo, Mario starts to understand the world better and says that all the things in the world are all a metaphor, which Pablo also falls into thought after hearing it. One day while going to work, Mario meets a beautiful girl, Beatrice, with whom he does not have any conversation. But Mario's eyes do not move away from her, and he immediately goes to Pablo and tells him that he has fallen in love and he wants Pablo's help. Pablo tells him that he has the cure for this disease but Mario tells him that he has to stay sick. Pablo tells him about a poet named Dante, who fell in love with a girl named Beatrice and was inspired by that love. He used to write poems for her. Mario tells him that he kept looking at her and there were talks between the two. When Pablo asks him what happened, he says that he asked Beatrice for her name, which Beatrice told him. That's it. Mario tells him to write a poetry for Beatrice, but he gets angry after hearing it because a poet has to see his inspiration to write poetry, and he does not know Beatrice. Mario says that if he will not be able to write a small poem, how will he get the Nobel Prize? Hearing this, 
Pablo tells him that he will have to do something himself to get his love and takes his letter and tells him to go. Mario thinks a lot, but can't write a poem. One day Pablo gives him a book with which he will be able to understand metaphors and with its help he will be able to write a poem for Beatrice. Seeing Pablo talking to someone on the radio, Mario asks him who he is talking to. Then he tells him that he is not talking to anyone, but this is a recording. He tells that he was a senator of a place where he wrote poems to help people. He tells Mario to say hello to those people, after which he prepares to go to meet Beatrice. Pablo goes to a cafe with him, where people are surprised to see him, and he sees Beatrice and writes something in the book. He signs an autograph for Mario, in which he tells him he is his friend and says that a poem is standing in front of you, now you write something for it. Mario meets Beatrice on the beach, after which she is in shock. She comes home and tells her mother that Mario has told her some metaphors that she has never heard before. For example, her smile spreads on her face like a butterfly. Mario told her a poem, after which she could not say anything. Her mother explains to her that if a man touches you with his words, he does not take time to touch you. She gets angry and says that there is no harm in words, but her mother has a problem with communist ideas like other villagers. Because of this, she does not understand the beauty of the poems and locks her in the house. Mario has now become part of Pablo's family, where he keeps coming and going to Pablo's house. He helps him write poems and also looks closely at the love between him and his wife. Then, Beatrice's mother comes to his house and complains to Mario that he has been fooling his daughter for a month and has trapped her in the web of love using his metaphors. She shows Pablo a poem written by Mario which surprises Pablo. But Beatrice's mother tells Pablo to keep Mario away from his daughter. Pablo explains to Mario that the words he has used are very strong and Beatrice's mother will kill him because she could not understand his words. Mario says that he is trapped in all this because of Pablo, to which Pablo says that all this happened because he wrote the poem for Beatrice that Pablo wrote for his wife. One night, Beatrice secretly goes to meet Mario, and after spending that night with each other, they decide to get married. They both want to make Pablo their witness to their marriage. But the church's father says that he is a communist, and communists do not believe in God. Communists also eat children in Russia, and he does not want such a man to be their witness who told Mario to write such a vulgar poem. Mario tries to explain to him that he was just writing about beauty, then Pablo comes there, who is seen by the praying father and agrees to get them married. Even after marriage, Mario's father says that he has only one dream that his son gets a job. Pablo receives a telegram that after reading it, he says something about his friend's married life in his own way and tells everyone that the arrest warrant against him and his wife has been withdrawn. And now they can go back to their country, their home. For the last time, Mario takes a letter to Pablo's house. But when Pablo gives him money, he does not take it. They both get emotional, and Pablo says that he will keep writing letters to Mario. He will leave some things behind because things always change in Chile. Today, he is going there. Tomorrow, he may have to run away from there again. Before leaving, they both hug each other, and Mario tries to write his first poem. Pablo had taught Mario that he should work for the people of his island, not getting water and being wrong with fishermen, even if he has been seeing all this since childhood. But all this is not normal. Now Mario raises his voice and decides to vote for the Communist Party. Apart from that, everyone supports the Democratic Party, whose leader is Di Cosimo. And despite Mario's explanation, everyone helps Di Cosimo, his wife too. Even while working, Mario only thought about poems and started keeping an eye on Pablo's every news. But one day in a news, Pablo talks about his time in Italy, but does not mention Mario or anyone else. Everyone feels bad about this. The Democratic Party was winning in Italy, and the Communist Party was losing, which started worrying Giorgio, and Mario was worried because he did not know where Pablo was and what he was doing. After winning the Di Cosimo election, he stops the waterwork. Mario then tells him that he knew that as soon as he won, he would stop his work. One day, the first letter of his life comes for Mario, which brings Giorgio to him. Mario is very happy to think that Pablo has written him a letter, 
But then he finds out that the letter was sent by Pablo's secretary, who wants him to return Pablo's things, which Pablo had left. Everyone feels bad after seeing this letter, but Mario still thinks that why does Pablo remember him when he is neither a good poet nor a good communist? He was just a postman. He believes that Pablo did not use him, but he asked for help every time and Pablo helped him. Beatrice then says that she will not keep her child's name in Pablo's name, as Mario wanted. The next day, Mario goes to return Pablo's things, and he remembers all the things that happened between Pablo and him. He also listens to the recording on the radio that Pablo had kept with him. Mario takes that radio and records the sound of every beautiful thing on the island. The waves of water, the wind that touches the mountains, the trees that touch the plants, the sound of the fishing nets, the bell of the church, and the sound of his to-be-born son, Pablito. All those beautiful things that Mario could not see, now he can see and feel. Finally, five years later, Pablo returns to the island with his wife, and then he meets Pablito in Beatrice's cafe, and then he learns from Beatrice that Mario had passed away before Pablito was born. She tells him the recording that Mario had kept for Pablo. She kept this recording with the hope that whenever Pablo heard that recording, he remembers Mario. He thought that while leaving, Pablo took all the beauties with him, but he realized that while leaving, he had left a lot behind for him. He had also learned to love life along with poetry. He had written a poem for Pablo, which was called to be sung in front of everyone after joining the Communist Party. And if Pablo had not come into his life, he would never have been able to write that poem. But before he could reach the stage to sing that poem, the police had arrived. And in that race, Mario had lost his life. Mario's first poem was lost with him. And like Mario, Pablo will never get that poem back. On that note, movie ends.